welcome to Working Better Together. Today we chat with Tom Hack, founder and director of the HR Trend Institute. Brilliant. Well, great to meet you, Tom. So I'm really excited to find out more about yourself and um, the HR Trend Institute. But just um, before we jump in, can you tell us maybe more about your background and how you got involved with uh, the HR Trend Institute? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, my, my professional career has always been in human resources. So uh, a long time ago, I started as a trainee at Philips Electronics and I, I moved my way up to several other positions. And in uh, uh, 2014, the last time I, you, I, you could say I was paid on the payroll, I was the global director of HR for Arcadis, which is a big engineering architectural company. Uh, then I, so in 2014, I founded the HR Trend Institute because uh, I, I wanted to be a little bit more at, at the front of innovation and, and, and change. And I thought, well, it, it, it's a good way to, to study it and then... And, and work work that so I transformed myself into uh, you could say a, a trend watcher so yeah. uh, uh, basically I do three things very briefly I, I do a lot of you could say writing and studying eh? so okay what what's happening I have to find out what's going on I write about that secondly I speak about it a lot on conferences wherever they want me in the world and thirdly I work with HR teams often an HR team let's say specifically HR teams of larger organizations. They go a couple of days on, on, on the, their offsite. They want something uh, inspirational and, and uh, outside view. And so yeah. someone looks and said HR trends or HR innovation. They find me, I hope, eh? sometimes they do. And then they invite me for, yeah, one hour. Or sometimes I do a workshop, whatever. So so basically my the main thing what I do is try to inspire people, mainly HR professionals, that things can be, yeah, can be different, can be done in, a, in, in, in different ways. And tell me, I mean, this is actually quite an interesting question. I mean, you've obviously been in an HR career background, okay, and you've obviously well educated. And, um, but where do you see the, I mean, the future of HR going from an educational point of view? I mean, can you still study um, HR in a sense as to where it's going? Uh, is the institutions out there that can train and equip you for the future of work, you know, from an HR perspective? I think so, yeah. So I, say, I still think HR is, is, is a profession. It's, so it, it's a, and it's a profession where, where, where you, 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 need, you can learn a, a lot of things that are uh, uh, valuable also in the future. Yeah. For example, the whole area of methodology, eh? sound experiments, sound method, methodology, statistics. Uh, what works and does not work, uh, analytics, uh, and of course also, uh, let's say, more, uh, more soft skills uh, are also uh, useful. You can learn them in, in different ways, but especially uh, uh, what, what are practices that really have impact on the organization. And there you expect, I would say, HR professionals to have a good view on yeah, the whole array of possible interventions and, and what is effective, what is not effective, and then how to build a good strategy out, out of all those possible interventions. So I think you can be educated uh, uh, and there's room for that, absolutely. I think the question I'm trying to say is, is can you be educated within your, in your traditional institutions, you know, your universities or your, or no, your that's college? An issue. No, that, yeah. that, so, but, but, but that's, that's, a, that's a big subject, eh? But yeah. that's not only for HR, that's also for other, uh, other subjects. And do the institutions teach people the right things? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, well, they are changing. I'm, I'm in contact with a lot of institutions, especially yeah. here in the Netherlands. Uh, universities, uh, universities of applied technology. And they, and they are changing. Yeah. So they are realizing that something needs but. Uh, a, a lot of what people learn today is old stuff. Yeah. And that, that, that's absolutely an issue. But now it's the transformation is more, don't learn people old stuff, yeah. but learn people how to deal with new stuff and how to learn stuff that's not already there. Yeah. And, and uh, learn people at least the basics in a good way. And, and, you had, and you're 100% right. It's not just HR and self. You look at it across multiple disciplines. You know, we've got, um, uh, for instance, at High Five right now, we've got uh, yeah. quite a few new recruits coming in 
um, from an engineering background and they've done a comp sci degree. And, uh, yeah. you know, they've just spent three years of their life just studying. And they realize as they start working, yeah. they've just wasted three years of their life, you know, uh, where most of it mm. could be taught online or in yeah. an environment yeah, yeah. where people are learning and upskilling themselves. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's, yeah it's, but, but I still think that, of course, when it's about knowledge, yeah. That, that, that has a, the, 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 that lives shortly, or how do you say it? The, 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 the life cycle is short. But when it comes to, if you look at lists, I don't have them here, but lists at what are f- kind of future proof skills, yeah. and there are certain elements you, you, you can learn. And that's, that, but that has, it has, has to do with communication, with, with making sense of complex situations, uh, understanding algorithms, those type of things. Yeah. Uh, I think it's useful to still to learn them at the, at the well, well, whatever. Okay, brilliant. You know, I mean, what I'm really keen to pick up is um, I, I really got caught up with reading your your trends analysis for 2019, especially mm-hmm. your report, the, the, the 10 talent management trends for 2019. And, yeah. and the yeah. first one that stuck out to me, if, you, if, if it's yeah. okay with you, I'd love to like jump onto a few topics. But yeah, uh, I, I think your first point was um, about renewing the talent management process, you know, about yeah. being more business orientated, more flexible and more personalized. Yeah. I'd love to just maybe touch base on that and just yeah. uh, get some more feedback on, on what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, let's say, you, the, the, what is the traditional talent management process in many organizations? Uh, and that's, I, I won't go through it because already that will take a little too much time. Yeah. But it, it often starts with, okay, what is the definition of talent? What yeah. are we looking for? And you, you, you uh, and often that's not that that's already where it starts. That's often not fact based, but opinion based. Who do we think is talent? So, it starts with the definition. Then they all there's always generally a detection process, a slow detection process, and a little bit secret. Eh? So talent managers, HR goes around the organization, and asks managers, who are your talent? Eh? And they put people on the list, and uh, uh, they gather all the lists. And then they go to what they what is called in the profession a calibration session, yeah. yeah. And in the calibration session, all the managers sit and say, "Well, oh, here's the profile of Tom. Where is Tom in the nine grid? You know, you know the nine grid, uh, that uh, potential and performance. And you want, of course, people with a high performance and a high potential today. And then people say, oh, yeah, if Tom is there, Julie uh, should be there as well. So there's calibration. At the end of the calibration session, the brrr, uh, there is a list of the talent pool. Uh, then there's a discussion what should be done with the, ta- the talent. The talent themselves are generally not involved. Right? So it's all talking yeah. about people. And, and it's all top down, you say? It's all top down. Yeah. It's, the line of sight of the managers is very limited mm. because they, they, who do they see? Eh? That's the people... Yeah, the obvious. So the list ends with the obvious candidate, often a not very diverse pool. And then generally no action is taken because this whole process often takes more or less a year. Then, it, then the full report has to discuss in the board with the supervisory board. And they say, well, uh, is Tom really talent? Uh, or do you have enough talent? Uh, uh, well, so it's, that's part, for a big part, it's window dressing. Yeah. Yeah. And also... You could say it's a kind, so it's a good process to uh, avoid the real discussions because everybody likes to talk about the future and, and do we have talent for the future and blah, 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 the talent pool. It's not urgent. It's, it's a nice discussions, but the urgent issues of today are often not tackled and people see that. A typical urgent issue of today is there is someone in the management team who is not very good. Yeah. Yeah. Not not poor, but average. Not very good. Not very stimulating. And blocking, in a sense, uh, the career of other people. Well, yeah, some management, uh, yeah, let's not deal with that at the moment. Eh? Uh, he's only there a year, etc. So avoiding the urgent issues. So this process is slow. The results are often not used. So many organizations are also complaining. Now we have a possibility or an urgent opportunity. Hey, where are the candidates? Well, and then, yeah, well, you know, the system is not up to date. There has been no uh, dialogue with the candidate. So they approach Tom and say, hey, Tom, do you want to go to Singapore? And they say, well, you know, no, not at all. Eh? My yeah. wife is working and I have my family here. And <laughs> so, so the, the, it doesn't lead to the right solution. So, so that is the starting point. This process is too slow and ineffective as well. 
Well, so in other words, what you said, I mean, it, what it comes down to is just really, really slow. I mean, what, what are your thoughts with how to speed this up? I mean, you know, well, there's different ways to do that. So, so first is make it more, you could say, evidence based. Yeah. So if you talk about what are the what are the characteristics of the top performers today, mm-hmm. hopefully a little bit future proof. That's more fact-based instead of opinion-based. So uh, spend and then and the analytics can be and if you have the analytics, you can do a lot of things faster. Yeah. One and you can also make the, the question is eh, the the traditional process is very much you could in a sense database oriented. Yeah. First we have to make a database with all the talent in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we can access the database. Yeah. Well, that is not in, in, in areas outside talent management. That's old-fashioned ways of where you don't need to build the database. Yeah. If your search capabilities are strong enough and quick enough, you can access whatever. It's like, we are looking for these type of candidates. Machine, where are they? Yeah. yeah. And that, that's possible today. So use analytics. Secondly, use technology especially in the, you could say, the sourcing mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, if you say, this is the type of people we are looking for, even if you say, we want more Toms, this is the profile of Tom. Okay, you put the profile of Tom in the machine, you say, where are people who are similar to Tom? 70%, 80%, 90%, and, and you get them on the table. Mm. Um, so, analytics, use technology, but also make the processes more transparent. Uh, because there are a lot of candidates, maybe you cannot even detect, or that are inconspicuous, or that, that are, are t- totally in areas where you would not expect it. But if you have an open process and say, hey, we have a great opportunity here, who wants to apply? Well, then, then you get candidates. Uh, uh, so it becomes, yeah, it becomes a situation where, where, where the candidates present themselves. Many organizations are very hesitant about that. Yeah, I, I think you're 100% right. I think what we've seen is that organizations are very quick to uh, spend money on ERP or sales mm-hmm. uh, uh, systems to measure the analytics on that, on that data. But then when it comes to people, it's the last thing they think about. Uh, uh, and the detriment there is that people are the, probably the biggest assets to the organizations, but they're too slow or they're too scared to take the, up on that, you know? Um, I mean, why do you think... Huh? Yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting yeah, there, but, yeah. but um, it's still seeing it a lot more slower than it should be. You know, and uh, no, uh, uh, what do you, why? Um, one of my um, one one thing that stuck out stood out to me in your in your trends report was that you mentioned that development as a service. You know, you you, you mentioned the story of like a, mm-hmm. like a football with a, a football team. You know, with some of the top players like they hire like your tactical analyst you know, yep. that helps them with their development. Um, tell me more about that and how, the, how you see the, the gathering yep. the data and, and optimizing the players in the, in the match. This is a very important element. Often, uh, the, 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 the interests of the individuals and the organization are generally not totally aligned. Yeah? Yeah. And that's that's not you, you should be open about it. You should not do as if you we that's totally aligned because, because it's not. And uh, and there that already causes a level of trust which is often not high enough. Eh? So if you are my boss and you're talking to me, well, my guess is you your number one priority is the organizational objectives. Yes. Mm. And second, and, and not my, you say, oh, Tom, I want you to develop it. But, but basically, you're there for the organization. And that's, exactly. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah. So do I want to open up to you totally? Do I, and are you the best person to coach me? Because often that's also a problem because you are my manager. But are you a good coach? Generally, not. Eh? So you give me some superficial feedback, mainly from the objective. Tom has to have feedback, but I want to keep him at least one more year in this project. So how do I do that? Um, in the, 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 the football an, a, a analogy is uh, also there, the interests are not aligned. The, the football club, they want to use the striker or the, the goalkeeper or whoever, yeah, to become champion this year, yeah, with their team. Yeah. yeah. The football players say, well, I'm, this is, I'm in this club now, but I want to develop further. 
beyond the scope of this uh, this club. So I want someone there to help me. And I pay that person. And, and of course, in football, that's generally not an issue. So that other people have some have money. So I, but I, let's you, I hire, I'm a football player. I hire you to analyze me, to, to gather my data, to look at my games, and then give me feedback. Hey, Tom, I saw you playing. We've analyzed. What, what, and here are areas you can improve. Da -da -da -da. Mm. You are there for me. And yeah. the data is my data, not your data. So that's data, it's also an, an issue of data ownership because organizations are gathering a lot of data ar around people. Yeah. But if you leave the organization, uh, can you then uh, uh, take all your data on a stick? Well, most of the time not. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, or in smaller organizations, maybe I don't know how big your organization is, but you see, I see that appearing in smaller organizations. Uh, a, 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 a client or an organization I'm working with is, is, is a software development company, 100, 100 people, 120 people. They have, you, as many companies, self-managed teams. So they work in teams of 15, 20 people. They don't have real HR. They have some recruitment, and, and things, but they don't have real HR. But they have two roles in their teams. One role, you could say, is the agile coach. Uh, but that's more the person who says, are we sticking to the agile rules? Are we following yeah. the handbook? Yeah. Uh, so that often those people come more from IT. Generally, they don't come from, uh, from HR. And there is a need for some personal coaching. Yes. In those organizations, you see the personal coaches often coming from outside the organization, as I described. So they hire personal coaches. Say, you are there. You talk to the people in the team, but you are there for them. Yeah, yes. so they talk to the people say, hey, are you developing? Are you happy in this team? Uh, what do you want to learn? Are you learning enough? But not reporting back to the organization. They are there for the individual. So there it's already appearing. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. If, you, if organizations are focused on growing their people and their talent, you know, the business will, um, will grow itself. But you know, if, mm -hmm. it is a, if the company just wants to keep growing for itself, and not focus on the people, you're going to get a flip-flop on the organization. So it almost like goes inward. So, uh, and, people, and organizations say it because all the organizations say, as you say, uh, human resources or people are our most important asset. You can develop here, etc. But people are not fools. Eh? So yeah. it's better maybe to have a more transactional relation in a, in a sense. Okay, I'm here. What am I going to do for you? How am I going to contribute to the organization? The developmental part can be a little bit separate. Of course, I appreciate your feedback. Absolutely. Eh? Yeah. Uh, but I gather feedback from multiple sources. And then I want someone who, who can help me to make sense of the feedback, to, uh, to develop that into manageable and, and next steps, etc. And, and I, that doesn't have to be you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I know we have, thanks a lot for your time. I mean, we've, uh, we've already gone on for quite a bit quite a bit of time now. So I just want to wrap up with a few just uh, final questions. Tell me, how yeah. do you spend your day on average? You know, what's your, your, what's your working routine? Yeah, so uh, no one day is the same for me. So that's yeah. worse. <laughs> but you could say I have two type of days. One, one day is I'm uh, working uh, in, in my office eh? and yeah. other days I'm traveling and, and performing and, and, and giving keynotes, etc. So th those days are totally different. Yeah. On a normal day here, Eh? Uh, well, it's it's a, a rather uh, uh, boring in a sense. I I wake up, I do meditation. Generally, I run for ten or fifteen k, and then I uh, uh, yeah, I forget all of course all the eating and things like that. But uh, then I, I I do a lot of study. Eh? So oh. I write and study because and 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 so that's for me the main part of my and connecting to people. Eh? Yeah. Uh, because I have a lot of, of these type of conversations also with innovators. So people come to me and say, hey, we have something fantastic. Uh, can we talk about it? Yeah. So, and I, I, I'm, uh, in a sense, and that's my work, I'm looking for stories. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for nice stories. I can tell and say, hey, now I've heard something. What are they doing there? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And I can give the example. Not theoretical, but give the example. So that, that's my normal day. And then, uh, uh, yeah. and anything you're reading re recently um, that uh, that's that's standing out for you? The, the, the most of my reading 
is done uh, 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 online. So wow. I'm I'm active in 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 the communities. Um, I'm, in in a sense, there's two valuable sources for me. One is LinkedIn, so I get a lot of info via LinkedIn yeah. and the people in my communities. Uh, secondly, it's it's Twitter uh, because tw- uh, there's a constant flow of 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 information via Twitter. Uh, and thirdly, uh, it's 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 a Flipboard. I don't know whether you know Flipboard. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But there's magazines and Flipboard, and uh, so so there's many curators I'm following. Excellent curators. There yeah. are people like David Green and the HR curator. Those are people who are yeah. So most of my reading is online. Uh, uh, I sometimes read books, uh, mm-hmm. but with let's uh, I don't know what yeah. I, I, yeah, one book, uh, two books are here. I'm currently reading. One is, it's an old, little bit older book, but that's a book I, I, I like a lot. That's Factfulness. I, I, I'm sure you know it's Hans Rosling. Yeah, uh, it's on my list. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the, I like those type of books where they kind of, uh, 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 yeah, how do you say it in good English? Debunk miss. Yes. Uh, uh, the second book is here, but it's a Dutch book. But I, I, you, you, um, you are African. But uh, uh, it, the, the English title is the best sold book ever and it's oh. about it's about data and how to yeah how to work with data and align with data etc so. i mean before we wrap up I, I know you made an interesting statement i'm keen to just jump on that for a little bit you know with the, with where, where the future of work's going and uh, you know you mentioned that a lot of organizations want to measure this data you know and i always have to remind organizations as they use high five and, and they get that continuous people data with culture and recognition is that it's great to ask for the data, but you know, I feel like with great data comes great responsibility, you know, first and foremost to feed back to the, the employees and the organization. And then also to ensure that the people are using the data and then they follow through on that. You know? How do you feel about, you know, if employees should actually have ownership on, of that data in the future and how could they go about that? No, so I think that's a very important element because, uh, again, it is with ten, with people analytics as with uh, 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 talent management, and often the approach is top down. Yeah. So the starting questions are often: we want to reduce turnover, we want to increase productivity, we mm. want to X Y Z. And so it's an organizational question. Then the measurement starts, and and they do or don't do things. The question, what is in it for me, what is in it for the employee, is often not well asked. Eh? So, yeah. so that shift is, is ongoing, but not, to be honest, not fast enough. It's often yeah. the first organization, people second. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I think that there's room. So there's room for... Uh, Solution like I'm gather I'm I'm a runner, I like to be healthy, so I'm uh, gathering a lot of of data on my machine. Yeah, yeah? Uh, with with solutions. Yeah, I use yeah? Strava or or Runkey. Yeah, Auto Sleep. Uh, I I use the the Apple running app. Uh, uh, Auto Sleep to to track my sleep. A Life Sum to track what I'm eating. So all kinds of of. Uh, but that's my data. It's your data. Yeah? Exactly. But it's my purse. And, and those type of solutions uh, in the work life, well, they, I, I don't know many of them. Eh? Yeah. Where you say, well, it's my data. And then, of course, I can do something with the data or the organization can do something with the data. But it's not most of the data today is in the bigger systems. Eh? Yeah. Gathered in, in uh, uh, whatever the work day is and the oracles and the SAPs, uh, what have you. Uh, but but so I like to say well be, be, because if I in this case I know what's in it for me exactly yeah yeah I'm I'm in control of my data I'm gathering yeah. the data uh, uh, and I'm very open for uh, help and suggestions and things like that so I think there's room yeah, yeah? Mm. Uh, and I think people will be yeah they. The question is, will people take it? Will people uh, say, well, we don't take it anymore. You're gathering yeah. my data, but I don't like it, what you're doing. And what exactly. you is it? And you're asking me the whole day, I, but I, I don't know your solution very well. Eh? But if you ask me the whole day, are, Tom, are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you doing with that? Are you using it against me? Or are you... Uh... So, so it's a very interesting domain. 
if the level of trust is high, it's less of an issue. But I think that is generally overestimated. And we say yeah. everybody trusts each other, but the level of trust in organization is not so bad. But 40 to 50% of the people, if you ask them, do you trust your employer to do the right thing? They say, well, maybe not. Yeah, and that's a yeah. very bad ratio. Yeah, it's yeah. worse for government and media. Eh? Yeah. Do you expect your <laughs> your government to do the right thing? It's lower, so, yeah, yeah. so uh, it's all relative. But uh, and, and, and you know what the sad thing is? I mean, Kim Scott nails us on the head. Do you know Kim Scott? She wrote the book Radical Candor. No, no. Uh, she, she sums up, you know, what employees of the future want. Um, yeah. And she says, you know, the purpose of recognition is to help others know what to keep doing more of. And the purpose of feedback is to help others know what to uh, keep um, focusing on, you know. Yeah, yeah. And what, what employers don't realize is that employees and, and staff mm -hmm. actually want this ongoing feedback. They want to get better, Absolutely. you know. Yeah. Um, but the, the problem is, is, is that distrust, you know, with the date and how much they give. So, yeah, there's an ongoing debate. Um, well, we've actually yeah, got, with our, we know with our product team in the future of where R5 is going. You know, we, we're getting all this data. And obviously, the organization's holding it right now. But we're looking at how can we put this in the employee's hands to keep for the but future. it's back to development as a service, in a sense. Because if there are independent providers, maybe like yeah. yourself, say, well, we gather the data. Yeah. And you can subscribe to our services. And, and they are employer independent, eh? uh, then there are possibilities. Yeah, exactly. That's brilliant. Yeah, but in the end, uh, the, 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 it's who pays. Eh? So uh, the, the, one question, of course, is uh, do consumers or employers, uh, do they want to pay for these type of things? And generally speaking, today the employers are paying so they can determine what's going on. And what's, uh, exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. That's brilliant. Wow, we've run out of time. I think we definitely have to do a part two in the future. So All right. <laughs> thanks a lot for, for uh, touching base and reaching out. Tell me, how can the audience reach out to you in the future? What's the best way to get hold of you? Well, I'm, if you type in Tom Hack in Google, there are several ways you can find. It's my website, uh, Twitter, uh, whatever you like. Uh, my emails uh, are around as well. So. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, okay. Yeah very good source as well so brilliant. linkedin and twitter hey? yeah. yeah 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 brilliant okay cool okay. well thanks a lot for for your time we really appreciate it. give us a high five nice to meet you take care Woo! cheers, Bye. cheers. Bye. <laughs>